Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. And then after that, we can sort of see. We, we can see how much time it takes and whether or not people want me to do that again. Or whether we should look at something else. If we've got an auto-load trailer, then that's definitely an option. Like We know that we can pick these bales up by hand and we can manually stack them on the trailer. So we're just saving ourselves a little bit of time. We're not sort of skipping steps. Um... I am kind of thinking that with bale, if we go for bigger bales, then we won't go for an auto load trailer if we are getting bigger bales. We'll get an Arcusan stacker because we've got those for both round bales. Uh, it doesn't have to be Arcusan, it's the, 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 the bale stacker anyway. Um, we, we got those available for round bales and square bales. So it doesn't matter what sort of bale we get, we have bale stackers that we can go and use. We can just do that. Um, which means that we don't need to use an auto loader for that. And then the only thing that we're using an auto loader for is the pallets. Um, to start with, I was actually thinking of not using it for the wool pallets from the sheep. Although I don't know what the wool pallet configuration is. If the wool pallet configuration is not a euro pallet and it's basically one like the fertilizer comes on a square pallet uh that's no good because the apparently the mod is only for euro pallets euro pallets and liquid pallets so i don't think we'd actually be able to use it for the well if well if if the wool is like that but i don't actually know what the wool is like this is, this is a mystery that we will have to wait and find out. So let me just bring that one up to there. And then we should actually leave this one running, I suppose. I, I turn it off because so often you like you, you have it running and then you drop it down. Oops. You have it running and then when, um, when you're reversing out over a row, it sort of connects with the row and causes problems. It, it um, like the as I'm turning round, the, the, the row that I've got it lifted up over, it kind of picks it and uh, chucks it back, pretty much like real life. It does do that in real life, which is why you've got to be careful when you're turning round on the, the rows in real life. Ooh, kicking back there a little bit. This one might struggle in that big dip that we've got right there. We'll see. I don't expect it'll be too, anything too serious. Nothing too bad. All right then, so I've come up to this point. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this one along here and I'm going to see if hired help will work. So I don't know if it's reading a field or if it's just reading the grass on the ground. I think it's reading a field because it doesn't do this in the time lapse series with the grass that I've got on the ground there. Now, is it going to try to take that outside round on this one? Yes, unfortunately. It probably won't try to take the outside round on the next bit, but maybe we should just have our baler and run round this a minute. Maybe that would be the best way to do it. All right, I can start up right there. Send him off up there. It's a big old windrow that we got on this one now. There's going to be a lot of bales just on that one line there. Go on up through. I do think we should fast forward time a little bit so that we can see if these sheep are actually going to give us any bull. Right, what are you going to do now? Are you going to turn around properly or are you going to... It is turning around now. I think this is going to end up sort of causing us too many problems. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll stop that one there a second. I'll lower that one down and I'll let that one off. And then I'll go and get the baler and we'll do the outside round. That's all I'm, I'm not going to do any more than that. I'm just going to do the outside round. And then once I've done the outside round, I'll put the rake back on and... I suppose we could do this one row that we've got here as well. But we'll put the rake back on. And we can go and start uh, the tractor and the uh, rake can carry on and do the work there. And we can go on and do the, uh, like, pick up some of these bales. We can just sort of group them up a little bit. That might be a good idea, actually. 
gather these bales up together, group them up, and then we're just while the tractor is working up and down the field, because these bales are going to get in his way anyway. I like this idea. This, this, this is a good idea that we've had. this and I'm not sure what the best I think uh, what the best um, crop out of greenhouses is I think the best crop is lettuce uh, you get 64 per hour for lettuce and then you get like 128 per hour for tomatoes and 256 per hour for strawberries but I believe that for actual cold hard cash in your hand lettuce does ultimately give you the best result there's also i think they also give that they have the biggest pallets as well so like we've got that to take into account uh, just having a drink and so the lettuce has got the biggest pallets i'm not sure if you can actually pick up the lettuce pallets by hand i know that you can pick up the strawberry ones by hand not sure about the tomato ones I've, as I've not personally tried those yet so there's a couple of things that we want to look at and we want to try we're going to need a water tanker to move the water from there to the greenhouse uh, something else I found out about the greenhouses with regards to water tanks actually we'll look at that in a minute when I've put the rake going again Let's get this little line of bales done down through here as well while we're at it. Because then we can... Uh, we can pick these up as at the same time. So I'm just going to run down here. We'll chuck a couple of those bales down that bottom end. Just out of the way of the tractor. Because otherwise they're going to get in his way. And he's going to end up tripping over them. And... Down to here. Like this... Right, you stay there a minute, and then if I have that, and I chuck that one over there. And that one as well. Not quite able to chuck them, there we go. <laughs> right. As a few of them cleared out of the way, that'll keep us busy for that'll keep us out of mischief for a minute, and we can drive the tractor back up now. We'll do the same up this top end, clear a couple of the bales out of the way, and then we need to just make sure that we've cleared everything along the top. So I'll bring the baler, and I'm just going to leave the baler right here, and we can go there. Hopefully, he's got brakes on, and then we can go back and get this rake going. Bring it back over here. Steady. Ain't that too hard. I don't want to break anything. And then that one comes down to here like this. So I just go H on there and jump out of the tractor. And then we can chuck these bales down over this way. So get that one down over there. And... So we could start bringing some of these up here. I'm not going to go and put them on the trailer because I want to see how many bales we get from this field. So I'll put these up here in a little group. Hopefully they're far enough away from the others. Uh, from, from that bit over there. We might have to manually finish up the, the raking over there. And then we want to come down here and clear some more of these out of the way we'll probably have to manually do the raking over there so we can chuck those bales back into a corner i suppose take you down this way it's a good job we got some nice tight bales here if you've got bales that are a bit loose and you try and um chuck them long distance like this they end up um sort of popping out of their strings it's a bit of a nuisance you don't want to do that not really chuck that one over there and then that one. What was it I was going to look at? It was oh, uh, we need a water tanker to be able to bring the stuff in. But it's, it's the water tanker. But 
in here. I thought that with silos, see all these mods that we've got in here. We've got loads of them. Um, we've got multi-fruit silos in here. This one right here is now full multi-fruit. We've got all of these extra silos here. Bags used to, big bags. Um, so you've got lime in there. You've got road salt, pig food, horse food, fertilizer, seed, uh, general bulk, chicken food right there. The chicken food one is the one that we'll be wanting. That one right there. That's the one that will be worth 10 grand to go and buy that one. That's the one that we'll be wanting eventually. Uh, this one here, the supplementary water tank, must be placed near greenhouses. That holds an extra 5,000 litres on top of what the greenhouse holds. I thought that you could use that and put it in a central location between several greenhouses and then fill up at that water tank and um, instead of each individual greenhouse. It turns out that might not be the case, at least not that I could see. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it does mean that what we've got to do is we've got to go and buy a water tanker, which has got to be that one. This one is 25,000, and it only holds an extra 5,000 litres. I don't have any other options at the moment, so that is the only one, really, that we will be looking at. Um, miscellaneous stuff up here. We've got the other stuff down here. Yeah, uh, slurry tankers in here like there's a few different options there's a, a mod one right there but none of these actually hold water water is like a different category i've tried adding water to something like one of these before it's a different category and it's really difficult to add water into them it, it does something weird with the xml and like uh, yeah so i'm not quite sure why but tr trying to add water into one of those was a, a really really difficult thing to try and do now, I thought I picked that one up. Apparently I didn't. We go and just put these up here out of the way. There's that one as well. So that's the ends of the rows cleared. I'll leave those other bales there for a minute. And then while that one is busy working there and doing that rowing up, we can group together a few more of these bales. So if we can get a small trailer like this one that is now available for moving pallets, if we can get a small trailer that will auto load these small bales, then for now we will stick with doing small bales. Uh, I'm happy to pick up this one field worth right here, but eventually this is going to get really, really tedious and we're not going to want to do this. So then we kind of need to be looking at something else. And some of you have been saying, well, I could use round bales. And there's a mod you can get, which is round this, basically it's sticky bales. And the round bales come out and then they stick to the ground. They don't go rolling off down the hill. But I thought, well, I can't really do that with this series because we're supposed to be playing in a more realistic fashion in this one. Uh, so that one I didn't really like. If... I'm, what I'm really hoping is that eventually there'll be some kind of bale sled option that we can use with these. Because if you look on the back there, it does have that bar. That is, you pull that pin out there and you actually put a hook in there. And then you can put a bale sled on the back. So I'm hoping that there will be some mods for small bales with bale sleds. Because that's something that I haven't seen yet. Whether it's flat eight sled or just a, a bunching sled, any anything really is just going to leave give us a, a bunch of bales put together rather than us having to um, do it like this. But if we've got a small trailer or a slightly bigger trailer, maybe about the size of that one up there, that we can use an auto loader and we can auto load the bales onto the trailer, I'm quite happy to go and use that one. I am more than happy to go and use that one. I think that's still playing fairly realistic. Rather than us doing this, we're just loading them onto a trailer. And if the auto load script is anything like what we've got at the moment with the pallets, you can't auto unload them anyway. So you kind of load them onto the trailer and then we would leave them on the trailer. And so that trailer, basically we just use that trailer for that. Either that or we get the bales back to the shed and then we've got to just like shove them all off the trailer. And either we've got to very, very carefully and slowly stack them into the shed, or we've got to uh, do it another way. So, I've, either of those options, I think, is actually pretty good. I, I like this idea. If we can have a small trailer that we can use for doing the bales, we, we could load it up. If we've got more than one trailer worth of bales, then maybe we do shove a few of them off into an untidy heap. And we have some extras. Doing it really tidy is going to be a very slow and tedious job. 
But, yeah. I reckon we could still do it. Alright. Sheep. How are we doing? Have a look. So, at the moment, my health is 10% for sheep. And they should be a lot higher than that. So, I'm on 1245 at the moment. We don't have to worry anymore about... Oh, I know what I do want to do. I just want to make sure. We'll, we'll check the weather forecast. If you look in here. September, October, November. See, at the moment, we've got... Oh, I see. Ah. Right, this goes up to midnight here on the weather forecast. I, I did wonder where this came from. Right. I'll show you something. That goes up to midnight on the weather forecast. And if you go to construction and you go to tools right here, is that one. Okay, is the weather station. Improves weather forecast available. So we can put that down. It's 4200 It is a bit expensive, so we're not going to do it right now. Uh, there is another mod as well that I got, which is... I think it actually comes under generators. That one. There. Cellular antenna. We get 20 euros an hour if we've got one of these put on our farm somewhere. I actually kind of like the idea of having one of these stuffed in a corner somewhere. That's 20 euros an hour as well. It's not We're not gaining a huge amount of money from it, but we would get a little bit, right? So you get 240 euros per day from that. Uh, so over time, you would eventually pay for yourself. Um, but it's it, it's not excessive in any way. I, I feel that that's actually quite a cool thing to have. Um, and then we've got these solar collectors and stuff like that. Maybe a thousand is a little bit. But usually the telephone mast people, that they pay you and you pay them. Which is why it's a thousand euros. Um, but that's that's quite a good idea on that one. I like that one. Right. Anyway, sorry. Um, we have the... In uh, sorry, buildings, tools, and this the, the weather station. You put the weather station down, and you get a more detailed weather forecast. And what that does, it allows the detailed forecast every hour to extend through until about eight o'clock the following morning, which is actually quite good. I didn't, I didn't occur to me. I didn't. Um, it it states that you get a more detailed forecast. I just didn't know what it was giving us that was more detailed now i have set that to two days it won't make the switch to two days per season until we get to actually it's, i think it's september it does the switch pretty sure it's september it will do the switch then we start getting two days per season so at the moment we don't have two days per season now what i am going to do though is i'm gonna fast forward time at 120 times speed until about three o'clock in the afternoon we're just going to push that one on forwards just for a couple of hours because I want to see if it makes a difference to those sheep. The health rate there is starting to come up. I'm pretty sure that the reproduction and wool, these are both on zero. Why are they on zero? I have sheeps right here. I've got animals. I don't really understand why I'm not getting anything, but it's now on two o'clock. Still the same. I was busy saying that I need to go and buy a water tanker. I've got one over there. Frith, you idiot. Right, I'm going to stop jumping that forward now because we've still got some work that we want to do and we don't want to run out of daylight completely. Uh, the reproduction, though. Interesting with the reproduction is that I've got 12 sheep here at the moment. That bar will very, very slowly fill up. But once it gets all the way up to the top, we don't get another sheep. We get 12 sheep. Right? We'll get 12 sheep all at once. It's very weird that it does it like that. But that's the way that this game works. It's also slightly frustrating that it works like that. Getting 12 sheep all at once rather than getting one every so often. Because what it's going to mean is in the long run... Right, I'm going to uh, do this myself now, just for this last bit. Uh, what it's going to mean is, in the long run, with regards to doing the sheep, um, we'll end up with the... Um, you, you get, like, all 12 at once. Now, we can only have 15 sheep in that pen at once anyway. And if you had the sheep coming through on a fairly regular basis you could be selling them off on a fairly regular basis as well. But if you get one big slug of them, you've got to wait ages and ages and ages without any of them coming through at all. 
and then suddenly you'll get up to 12 sheep all at once but because we've only got space for 15 in there you don't get to make the most of all of the you, you don't get to make the most of the kind of the, the breeding part of it and so I think that has taken a little bit of a step back in regards to gameplay but I mean over time it will kind of spread out a bit because you'll have three new sheep and then those will be lambs so you've got to wait uh, I think a season I don't know at the moment we're not getting any wool so I'm assuming it's because they're still lambs and so they're not going to be producing anything for us uh, so we need to sort of find out when we start getting wool from these sheep so that's another thing to keep an eye on and once we do we'll want to sell off some of the older sheep i don't know how long the sheep live before they die of old age or even if they do die of old age i mean that, that that might not be a thing so we may not need to worry about keeping the sheep until they get uh we may not need to worry about sort of replacing the sheep as they get older but i mean this particular series we're trying to play it more realistically so we will do that anyway we'll simulate uh, swapping out the older sheep um, and keeping some of the lambs in which means that over time we'll have a lot of different aged animals in our flock and then you won't be getting a massive slug of it trying to produce 12 new animals all at once you'll just have them turning up a few at a time which would be better because I'm kind of thinking that because we've got space for 15 in that pen we aim to have 12 adults there all the time and then we'll get three lambs will turn up and then once those lambs start turning into adults and they're producing wool as well then we can start working on um doing some more stuff so i don't know i, I mean i'm guessing they should be reproducing now it doesn't say that they're too young for that and it would say, when he, at least it does with the cattle, it says when they're too young for producing wool. Right, well, anyway. I'm not quite sure. So we'll deal with that in a bit. we got some baling to go and do now, and then we've got to gather up these bales. At the moment, we don't have an auto-load trailer. Really, really hopeful that we will have a decent auto-load trailer. If we had one like that trailer up there, or like this new one that I've been looking at... Um, with the pallets if we're able to use something like that for doing auto load that's going to be absolutely fantastic it really is so we'll undo this one just like that i love that clips all the way through there it's fantastic and i will bring that one back down here we could i suppose we could actually install a couple of sheds like we, we could end up getting um, a couple of those nine grand sheds and do... Uh, what could we do? We'd have one for storing hay in, and then maybe we'd put the baler in one bay and the hay in another bay. And then we get another one that we could go and put, like, the, the rake and the, the hay turner and a few other bits in as well. So we got that stored away and then all that we'd have left to worry about is maybe the tractor itself i don't know if the tractor would fit into it it'd be nice if we could put the tractor under cover as well like we would like to have the sheds to be able to put all of this stuff under cover and this is something i feel that we need to sort of have as i don't know about priority but um it's, it's going to be important. We, we do want to make sure that we've got a neat, tidy farm. I don't, I don't want to have another farm where everything is just kind of strewn about. I would like to actually store my machinery undercover. Both of the last two hardcore series, I didn't have anything keeping my machinery undercover. Um, I didn't at all, did I? In the Boulder Canyon one, we didn't have any any shelter at all for our machinery. We, we, we didn't do that. And then the Hardcore series here in Erlingrat, we didn't have anything to keep the machinery undercover. And we've started off like that as well here. I mean, yes, in theory, we can just say that we've got tarpaulins over the top of our machinery, which is kind of a good way to do it. But it's not brilliant, is it? Let's be honest, it's not brilliant. We don't really want to be going off down that road we want to keep our machinery a little bit tidier than that we actually want to do something that we can be proud of here 
didn't like that little uneven bit there, did it? It made the machine dance around a bit. Fortunately, this tractor is fairly robust. It's able to drag it through anything. It doesn't really worry about such things and just keeps going. I rather admire that about this tractor. Some of you did actually say, I did, I did see some comments. Um, some of you, you know, quite pleased to see this tractor. That you actually used to use a tractor like this. Um, uh, one person was saying that it wasn't quite this model. It was a slightly different model that their grandfather had. And they spent quite a number of hours riding around in this tractor. Someone else said that their family farm had one of these tractors. And so it's quite a familiar sight to them. Um, it's really cool. I really like that we're using the machinery that people actually used to drive around in. I know um, many of you know by now that the John Deere that they've added to the game, the John Deere... Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. I've got to go and have a look. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to look. Sorry. Has hashtag sorry, not sorry. Uh, this one right here. This is a 4755. It's quite a bit of a, a, a bit of a beast with the round cab. All right, that round cab is, is quite important. This is a bigger tractor to the one that I used to drive. Um, I used to drive a 2650. It's one of the first tractors that I ever drove, and it's one I basically learned to drive on. Um, I did my very first driving that I ever did was a Massey 35, and so I sort of learned the very basics on there, but I really started to learn how to operate a tractor and um, operate the implements to go on it and, and really started to develop an understanding of how they work and how to use them correctly using a John Deere 2650. It's about a 65 horsepower tractor I believe. It might be as much as an 80 horsepower tractor. Something like that. Anyway, for the small farms in uh, um, the west country of England it's, it was a uh, well, 20 years ago when I was doing it, or actually I suppose it's more like 25 years ago now. Um, it was quite a big tractor. That that was the, the big tractor of the farm that I was working on. And most farms, their big tractor would have been around about that size. Some of them would have gone a little bit bigger. Some of them would have been a bit bigger than a, um, a you know, a 70 to 80 horsepower tractor. Um, these days... Even the small farms, they seem to have like a 150 horsepower tractor kicking around as their big tractor, which it, it does seem a little bit odd to me. Why do why we need this extra horsepower whizzing around on the farm? I mean, yes, you've got sometimes they're, they're pulling big balers, which do require a bit more um, oomph under the bonnet in order to be able to make them run. But a lot of the machines that people are still using in the fields aren't a lot different to what I was pulling around with the 2650. And so it does sometimes seem a little bit odd that now the standard tractor is like 130 to 150 horsepower, double the horsepower nearly of the machine that I used to drive. I, I, this is where someone will turn around and say, well, actually, the 2650 was a 70 horsepower tractor. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it could be anything. But it, it seems odd that the little farms are now driving around in tractors that are so much more powerful. And the big farms, yeah, they always used to be driving around in very big, powerful tractors anywhere, or at least big, powerful by the standards of this country, um, the areas that I've worked in, at least. I worked on a big estate with several thousand acres, and um, yes. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.